Hey, this is Kathy from Kathy Cooks For You. Welcome to my kitchen. I have an amazing fig and walnut babka for you. This is with sourdough and it is absolutely spectacular to make and eat. And it also looks gorgeous. It is incredible. And it's something that will knock your family's socks off, not just visually, but deliciously and it's something different to take somewhere whether it's to a work function just work itself a holiday party this will be something that people will be like who made that so watch this recipe and try it yourself we are going to start by adding two and a quarter cups all-purpose flour to our mixer a third a cup of sugar and a half a cup of sourdough starter. Now we are gonna mix this together and it's gonna be kind of a crumbly mess. So don't, don't think it's just gonna turn into a nice dough at this point. Once we get that somewhat mixed together, then we're gonna add our one and a half eggs, our third of a cup of melted butter, and our pinch of salt, which is about a quarter teaspoon for a pinch of salt. And we're gonna add this together. At this point, if you notice that your dough does not look um, like it's coming together at all, it's okay if you add one to two teaspoons of water. You may find later, like I did, ooh, now my dough seems a little wet at the end. And you'll see I add a little bit of flour at the end to get it to not be so wet. Moral of the story, I really should have waited a little bit to let that dough come together. But you know what? It still turned out fine that I added two teaspoons of water and two more teaspoons of flour. Not that big of a deal. I wanted to put this in here so you could see that there is some flexibility in this recipe. That whole mixing process took about three to four minutes. Now we were on to switching to our dough hook and letting the dough hook knead our dough for about 10 minutes on medium speed. If you are kneading this by hand, knead it until the dough becomes smooth. Once you're finished kneading, transfer this to a greased bowl and cover with plastic wrap. Have it in a semi-warm place. You can put it in your oven and just turn the light on. You can leave it on top of the fridge. Um, don't have it by AC vent or anything like that. This is going to take a while to double in size. You're looking at, you know, a good six hours or so. This is a heavy dough with butter and egg, so it's going to take a while to rise. So after it has risen, then we're going to put it in the fridge to chill overnight. Also, check out my sourdough playlist. You will not only learn how to make sourdough starter, but you will find recipes on what to do with that starter. And subscribe below. Okay, now the super fun part. You wanna roll your dough out to about 18 inches by 12 inches, something like that. And then we're gonna add our fig preserve. I bought an 11 ounce jar of fig preserve and I used a little over half of it, and it was perfect. You can use another kind of preserve. I wouldn't go to a jelly. Preserves are usually thicker, they have pieces of fruit in them, and they're higher quality. So that's why I like to use this. And then we're going to just break up walnuts. Now this time I did not toast my walnuts. You probably should. You're gonna have much more flavor if you toast them. It was early in the morning because I just took the dough out and so I didn't toast them. One thing about the dough that I want to tell you, you are going to be rolling out chilled dough. It's not as easy to roll out as regular room temperature dough. So just remember that, don't be alarmed by it. You'll be fine. Oh, now the fun part, getting to roll it up. So you're just going to go along and continue rolling it up. I, with my um, one hand, stretch the dough just a little before I pat it over, just to get a nice tight roll. At the end, I didn't feel I needed to, 
but you can also put a little water at the end to seal that seam. Mine seemed sealed enough, so I didn't do that. Now, at this point, recipe said to chill it in the fridge or freezer for a little bit so it's easier to cut and put into a braid. I didn't do this. It wasn't that big of a deal. So I cut it with a butter knife, just one slice straight down the middle, and then we're going to twist it. And you're gonna see that you're gonna wanna keep these, these layers on the top because that's what makes the dough so beautiful. See all those cut layers? Those you want to show. See how I, I, I make it so those show right there? That's where the beauty comes and why this is so impressive. Once we get it twisted, we're going to place it in our bread pan. I just curl those edges under, get my bread pan that is greased, and I place it in it. Oh, now guys, it was supposed to be rising four hours at this point, but I didn't do it. I put it in the oven just like that, and look what came out. 45 minutes later, this gorgeous masterpiece came out. Absolutely spectacular. It's not in the video, but also a simple syrup of two tablespoons of sugar and two tablespoons of water. After it was boiled and dissolved, I spread that over the top. It keeps it moist and delicious. Thanks for watching this amazing recipe. Couple things for you. After you braided your sourdough or twisted it and put it in your pan, you're supposed to let it rise for four hours. I did not do that process and it still turned out really well. It could be the reason why I had to bake it a little longer because it was you know, a little more dense. It was fabulous. So um, next time I'm gonna let it rise and we'll see which I like better. Thank you so much for watching Kathy Cooks For You. Please subscribe below, give me some thumbs up, or I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Thank you.